Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for this time you have given to us. And we are asking, O oh Lord, you will bless all of us together, Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, at this example of a praying youth that you are revealing to us today, we will follow the example. And then our prayer lives will change in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' If you want to clap, if there is no le leprosy in your hand, no crow crow in your hand, you want to clap, you can clap. Amen. I'm talking to you this morning on a praying youth. Praying. What a privilege that is. And a neglected privilege it is. Prayer can change anything. And prayer can change anyone. Think about anything in your life that you want to be changed. Think about who you are. And you as a person, the totality of your life, the direction of your life, the vision in your life, the achievement in your life. Think about yourself as an individual. The prayer that you pray today can change you because prayer can change anything. And prayer can change anyone. Listen to this. It can change your dryness to freshness. When I talk about prayer, prayer can change your emptiness to fullness. Prayer can change your sadness to gladness. And prayer can change your bad luck to good luck. Prayer can change the curse in your life into a blessing. And prayer can change a sinner to a saint. Prayer. It's prayer, listen, that brings the resources of heaven to meet the needs on earth. There are so many resources in heaven. Great resources in heaven. And there are so many needs here on earth. And the connecting hand, the link that brings heaven to earth and makes us to touch heaven is prayer prayer brings the resources of heaven to meet the needs on earth and in particular today we're talking about a praying youth in first chronicles chapter 4 first chronicles chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 and Jabez was more honorable and his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Jabez. The mother called this name Jabez, because I bear him in sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. That's, that means he prayed. That means he presented his case before the Almighty God. And this Jabez, born in sorrow, he cried unto the Lord, the God of Israel. And he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it might not, it may not grieve me. And God granted him. And God granted him. And God granted him. And God granted him that which he requested. That means God answered his prayer. As you look at Jabez, and you look at the life of Jabez, and you look at the conception of Jabez, and you look at the birth of Jabez, and you look at the surrounding of Jabez, and you look at the situation of Jabez, there are three things to see. Number one, sorrow. Number two, suffering. Number three, shame. And because of his circumstances, and because of his situation, and because of everything surrounding him, sorrow, suffering, shame. He woke up in the morning when he was still very young. He looked at his circumstances. He looked at his situation. He looked at everything around him. And all he saw, sorrow, suffering, and shame. 
until he began to ask questions from the mother and began to say mom what's the problem here i look at my surrounding i look at my situation i look at my circumstances all i see sorrow suffering shame and then the mother began to tell the story the mother began to say the evil things that had been on her and her family before Jabez was born. In fact, that that was the very reason he gave this boy the name Jabez. Sorrow, suffering, shame. And then what will Jabez do? Before I tell you, I mean, I've read it already, but before I explain more to you about what Jabez did, I'm asking a question now. What do other young people do? If they find out that their situation, their circumstances, their surrounding, everything is filled with sorrow, suffering, and shame. What do these young people do? Let me show you in Job chapter 21. Job chapter 21, verses 14 and 15. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us. You know, those young people, whenever they find out, why is it like this with me? How is it before I was even born? My circumstances, my situation, my surrounding, everything filled with sorrow and suffering and shame. Why? So, their attitude is, in this verse 14, they say unto God, depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. And they get angry at God. If you allowed that to happen to me before I was ever born, and all my surrounding situations, circumstances, everything sorrow, suffering, and shame, get away from me. Don't tell me to come to church. Don't tell me to read the Bible. Don't tell me that you love me. Don't tell me you want to do anything in my life. Depart from me. And you know how many young people are like that? They just get angry at God. They get angry at the Bible. They get angry at the church. They get angry at the pastor. They get angry at praying people. They get angry at church people. They get angry at religion. They get angry about everything because see my circumstances. And then in verse 15, what is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? The attitude is prayer, forget it. Bible reading, forget it. Christian fellowship, don't talk to me about that again. Because of this situation and because of what they find on ground, the sorrow and the suffering and the shame. In fact, in verse, look at this in verse 11. They send forth the little ones like a flock. Their children dance. They, they take to dancing, and they take to drinking, and they take to smoking, and they take to hooliganism, and they, go, and they take to gangsterism. They say, well, since the situation is like this, what do you expect me to do? Dancing, nightclub, and drinking. In fact, sometimes prostitution. Well, since already I'm born with sorrow and suffering and shame, I don't have the sense of any shame. You think that thing is shameful prostitution? Leave me alone. Don't you know my name? My name is Jabez. And since sorrow is there already, suffering is there already, shame is there already, what do you want me to do? Leave me alone. You see, that is the attitude of very many young people because of what they discover in their lives. Other people, it will be violence. I am not happy. Why do you want to be happy? I don't have peace in my family. Why do you want to have peace in your family? There is suffering in my life. Why do you want enjoyment? Violence. And they are violent. Anybody they see laughing, anybody they see happy, anybody they see smiling, they say, what's the matter with this fellow? I have sorrow. I have suffering, I have shame, and this one is smiling and laughing, they get violent, they become unhappy. Other people go to occultism. Because of my name, and because of my situation, and because of what I'm going through, occultism, they, they're looking for, you see that word occultism. 
The root word there actually means very secret. They're looking for secret power. They're saying, this sorrow in my life, this uh, shame in my life, this suffering in my life, I'm going to look for a kind of secret power. I'll get into occultism. They'll get into covenant with the devil. Other people, they say, ah, you father and mother, before I was born, you didn't prepare very well for me. You want to tell me that the pregnancy was an accident? How is it when I was born, you didn't make adequate preparation, and you're telling me stories, and you're talking about sorrow and suffering and shame, or I'll show you. And so, they'll begin to take the things at home, and they'll begin to go and sell them. Even the little things that remain at home, whether it's a chair, or it's a mattress, or whatever they say, you didn't prepare for me, and now I'm suffering. Because you brought me to this world, I will make you suffer. They steal from home. Other people just go to the street, and they'll be sleeping under the bridge. Other people is begging, help a poor boy. Help a poor boy. My father is dead. Even my mother is dead. The mother is at home. My mother is dead. I have nobody help me, helping me. Help a poor boy. Let me survive. Let me survive. They'll take it to begging. But Jabez said, there is a way. When everything is dry, when everything looks like sorrow and suffering and shame, when everything looks like it's upside down, I will look up to for whence my help, my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord that created the heavens and the earth. Instead of Jabez doing all these bad things, all these naughty things, what Jabez did is that Jabez did what? Jabez prayed. He cried unto the Lord. If you find in your family, if you find in your academic career, if you find in your very life, if you find all around you the sorrow and the suffering, the shame, the best solution, the only solution, and the solution that will help you to be happy and turn everything around is that you will call upon the Lord and you will pray. Everybody say, pray. That's what the Lord wants you to do. A pray use. A pray you that whatever has happened in your family and whatever is happening in your life, the solution, that solution is that you will call upon the God of heaven. You will pray. I bring three points to you in the message today. Number one, the reasons for praying. The reasons for praying. Number two, the requests asked for in prayer. The requests asked for in prayer. Number three, receiving answers to prayer. Receiving answers to prayer. Number one, the reasons advanced for praying. The reasons why we pray. The reasons why Jabez and all the youths in the Bible, why they prayed. The reasons why you ought to pray. Number one then, the reasons for praying. I go to Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Reading from verse 15. Genesis 21, 15, and the water was spent, that means it finished, in the bottle. And she cast the child on the one of the shops. And she went and sat her down, over against him a good way up, a good distance up. As it were, a bush short. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she, the mother, sat over against him. And she lifted up her voice and wept. And the Lord God and God heard the voice of the Lord. And God heard the voice of the Lord. And God heard the voice of the Lord. The mother was praying. And the mother was crying. And the mother was weeping. And the boy too, the Lord, was also weeping. I want you to know the boy we're talking about here was already a teenager, a teenager, because he was born about 12, 13 years before Isaac was born. And now Isaac had been born. 
and this was a teenager already and then they were sent away from home and all the resources they had in their hands finished and the mother felt this child was going to die and so she cried unto the Lord she was crying and the child too the teenager was also crying but God heard the voice and the cry of the lad. I'm asking you a question now. Why will this boy cry? Number one, despair. No assurance of the future. The mother and the child had been sent away from home. All the resources they had, everything had finished. And there was nothing to take care of them anymore. All that the boy could see, all that the mother could see, was despair and death. And because of no future, no future, that's the reason why this boy prayed. I had to look in front. And as you look at what you have, and you look at what you don't have, I challenge you, what's the future for you? And because of the despair, and because of there is no certainty of the future, that's the reason you are praying. That's the reason you are calling upon the Lord. Number two, poverty. And you see this boy, when the mother had been sent away, and they had nothing to even live on. This was real poverty, abject poverty. And as you look at your life, my boy, as you look at your life, my girl, and you look at what your parents have and what your parents don't have, and you see the poverty. That's the reason you pray, because there is a God in heaven, and the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and He has all the resources in heaven to be able to take care of you, and you are poor, and you have, you have nothing to take care of yourself. There is no future, and there is no money, there is no finance, there is no supply. That's the reason you pray. Number three, rejection. If you know anything that is very, very painful, it's when Father rejects you. As if you are an illegitimate child. If you know anything painful, it's when you are asking mom, is that man my real father? Why is it he never smiles at me? Why is it he throws us out? Why is it he doesn't care where we sleep? He doesn't care where we live? He doesn't care whether we're in the home or we're in the bush? doesn't care about our livelihood at all? Is this man my real father? If there is anything that is painful in your life, it is rejection. This boy was rejected. And the mother was rejected. And they were thrown away from home. That's the reason this boy cried unto the Lord. Have you found rejection in your life? It may be in your family. It may be there is a cause of study you've been thinking about. And this is the dream of your life. This is the vision and the goal and the aim of your life. This is what you're dreaming and thinking about. I want to become a doctor. I want to become an engineer. I want to become this. I want to become that. And then they reject you. They reject you. They say, no, you cannot study that. And it pains you to the marrow. It pains you. This is what I want to be. The department rejects you, the faculty rejects you, the university rejects you, everybody rejects you. They will not even submit your form. Rejection. And it is because of this rejection that you are praying and crying unto the Lord. Number four, exposure to danger. No shelter, no protection. They had been sent away from home, the mother and the child. And you see now, in the bush where they were, the snakes were there, the wild animals were there, danger was there, and there was no shelter for them. And because of that exposure to danger, as you look at your life today, and you are going on the streets, and you are going in the busy places in the major cities, and you see the danger there and you see that your life is vulnerable your life could be attacked anytime and you are exposed to danger that's the reason why we pray number five the absence of a father the absence of a father this is a fatherless generation even when the father is at home, he wakes up early in the morning, he goes to work and before father comes back home we have all slept we barely will not see him. And sometimes our father, he leaves home and he goes to be with another woman down the street. 
I will say, Mom, where is Father? And Mom will be crying and wiping away the tears. Well, Father has gone to be with a strange woman somewhere. Fatherless generation. No father. No counseling. No control. And there is, there is no help. Because the father is never around. This boy I'm talking about to you, the reason he prayed and the reason he was crying to God is that the mother and the child had been sent away and there was no father. The father was there, but the father says, I have nothing to do with you anymore. I'm concentrating on this other child alone. And when you think about that, what is your father today? What's your father doing today? What's the plan of your father for you today? When last did your father discuss with you? When last did your father know the pain, the agony of your heart and the things you are going through? When last did your father sit down with you to talk to you and to counsel you and to say, my boy, my girl, this is what I went through when I was young and this is what you are going through now and give you and lend you some wisdom. When did your father sit down with you to tell you, to ask you about your education, about your studies, and about your aspiration, about your ambition, about what you want to do? This is a fatherless generation. That's the reason why young people, if the father on earth has rejected you, there is a father in heaven, a father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Father in heaven, I don't have a father here give us this day our daily bread forgive us all our trespasses as we forgive the people that trespass against us lead us not in the way of temptation but deliver us from evil because father in heaven our father on earth is powerless but thine is the power our father on earth has no control has no house has no territory has no kingdom thine is the kingdom forever and ever I've not seen my father on earth here father in heaven take care of me that's the reason young people pray because this is a fatherless generation number six the helplessness of the mother the mother was there but she was helpless what's she going to do what does she have as the boy is crying the mother is crying that's the reason why when you have you can't see your father and your mother is helpless your mother is good hearted she is kind she is loving but she has nothing no resources to take care of you that's the reason why young people pray fatherless generation pray and people with helpless mothers and it appears the whole situation is totally is totally miserable and hopeless that's why young people that's why we pray and then as you come to uh, come on here now as you come to first chronicles chapter four first chronicles chapter four and we look at this example of that we're looking at and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name Jabez saying because I bear him with sorrow the mother called his name Jabez because I called I, I he was born with sorrow I bear him with sorrow number seven reason why we're praised because of the sorrow and the suffering the sorrow and the suffering in our lives as we look at ourselves, we go to school, and then we have classmates. And when these classmates are bringing out money and they are spending, and to take lunch or to take whatever, we'll be looking at them and saying, ah, and these are the same children in this same Nigeria, in this same country. And whenever it is that we're staying there at the bus stop and you know the, we don't have any bus to even take even the money to take the bus is not sufficient we have another child and the driver comes for him with an air-conditioned car and he enters in and he waves at us and says bye 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 i'll see you tomorrow and you don't know when you are going to get your bus the sorrow and the suffering and when other people tell you that the reason they are trying to cut down the milk they are taking because there's too much milk and you have not taken milk for a whole week and this fellow is saying i'm cutting down the milk i'm taking because there's too much milk at home they are giving unto us the sorrow and the suffering as you compare yourself and you compare your life with all the lives of the other boys and other girls the sorrow in your life as you make the comparison that's the reason we pray 
that if there is nobody on earth to be able to provide all these things for you there is a god in heaven there is a father in heaven that will be able to provide for you what earthly people cannot provide for you number eight the shame and the confusion that, that's what happened to Jabez. That's why Jabez called. As you look at Psalm 88, young people. Psalm 88. The reason why we pray, Psalm 88. I'm reading from verse 13 all through to verse 15. 88, verse 13. But unto, unto thee have I cried, O Lord. In the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. My prayer will wake you up. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. You see, because of the distraction, because of the shame and the confusion, and also because of the sin that came upon his life in, Je in Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 24 and verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 24, verse 25. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. Their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters will lie down in our shame. And our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned. For we have sinned. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we, our fathers, from our youth, even unto this day, have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. This is the reason why young people pray, because of the sin and because of the guilt. Number 10, because of the bondage, the bondage, the cage. The captivity into which we bring ourselves by those bad habits, destructive habits, and the hard drugs. Number 11, because of sickness. Because as you look at all these things, despair, distress, rejection, and poverty, and exposure to danger, and the absence of a father, and the helplessness of the mother, and the hopelessness in the home, and the sorrow and the suffering, and the shame and the confusion, and the sin and the guilt, and the bondage to bad habits, destructive habits, they culminate, they gather together, and the impact of those things in our lives is sickness. And because of the sickness, that's the reason why we pray. Number 12, because of demonic affliction. Because you see, when there is a crack in the wall, the lizards are able to enter in. And when your life is cracked with sorrow and despair and dejection and crying and negative thoughts every time, then the demons like the lizards will be able to enter in through the cracks in your lives. That's the reason why young people pray. And as you look at all these that were read, then you understand the reason why you must pray. In Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 4, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 4, Wilt thou not from this time, will you not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth. I look at everything in my life. I look at myself, comparing myself with Jabez, and then I see like Jabez, the sorrow, and the suffering, and the shame. And the only thing for me to do is what Jabez did, cry unto the God of heaven, and say, my father, thou art the guide of my youth. That's what the Lord is challenging us, young people today, that we ought to do. We need to cry unto the Lord and call upon the Lord because of the situation, because of the surrounding, because of our circumstances, and because of the sorrow and the suffering and the shame. You call upon the name of the Lord. Number two now, the requests asked for in prayer. As we look at Jabez, this praying youth, and we begin to see what kind of prayer did he pray, if you were. In all these things I described to you, how would you pray? What should you be asking about? And as we are looking at the word of God today, when I finish, after you've had the word of God, 
and it is time to pray what will you be asking for from the Lord the requests asked for in prayer in first Chronicles again chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 9 and from verse 10 Let, let's analyze the requests he asked for verse 9 and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name Jabez saying because I bear him with sorrow and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying here is the prayer here are the items in the prayer here are the requests he made in the prayer number one oh that thou wilt bless me indeed bless me bless me bless even me that's the first request in the prayer and enlarge my coast enlarge my coast this thing is too small here enlarge my coast this surrounding here is too choking for me enlarge my coast the inconvenience here is too much for me enlarge my coast i'm gashed in i'm caged in and every time I try to stretch my hand here, stretch my leg here, look here, but everything is so confined and lack my coast. Number three, it tells the Lord in his prayer, and that thine hand might be with me, the hand of power, the hand of might, the hand of hell and the hand of grace that's your hand and the hand that gentle tender hand of love that's your hand might be with me number three and then it goes on it said that thou wouldest keep me from evil there's so much evil around there's so much evil around in the day and in the night on the street and even in the home in the school everywhere i find myself there are evil people and there are evil spirits evil is around what I'm asking for as number four is that you will keep me from all the evil around and then it says that it might not grieve me a lot of grief a lot of sorrow take grief away from my life take grief and sorrow and suffering away from my life number five you'll see that the prayers and the request that he made before the Lord number one he wanted blessing Number two, he wanted an enlargement of his coast. Number three, he wanted God's hand to be with him. Number four, he wanted the Almighty God to keep him away from evil. Number five, he wanted no more grief. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Since I was born, grief, 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 sorrow and sadness it's enough no more grief those were the things he was asking for and as you look and analyze the prayer of jabez and you see that number one he prayed i need blessing it may be the blessing of success i need blessing it may be the blessing of healing i need blessing it may be the blessing of intelligence i need blessing and it may be the blessing of salvation i need blessing whatever blessing it is those good things you have that have been missing since the beginning of my life lord i need blessing everybody say blessing everybody say i need blessing how do we have it how do we have it how do we have the blessing of the lord in psalm 1 i'm reading to you from verse 1 psalm 1 from verse 1 blessed is the man blessed is the boy blessed is the girl that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the in the way of sinners nor standeth in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of discomfort as we're looking for blessing from the lord he says here is how the blessing comes that you will not listen you will not walk you will not copy the ungodly people you will not walk in their way you will not stand 
with them in the way. Neither will you see it in the seat of his comfort. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. That's how to get the blessing. And then he tells us, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever and whatsoever and whatsoever and whatsoever he doeth maybe studying maybe walking whatever it is whatsoever he doeth he shall prosper that's a blessing and as we look at Psalm 40 verse 4 Psalm 40 verse 4 Jabez said Lord bless me bless me and the way to have this blessing is that he will depart from the way of the wicked. In verse 4 of Psalm 40, Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Why not? Why not? Why, why wouldn't you make the Lord your trust? There's no father, and the mother is helpless, and the situation is bad, and the surroundings, they are not desirable, and there is only sorrow and suffering and shame. Who else do you have but only the Lord? Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud. He will not go with the people that are proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Has nothing to do with those liars. Will not copy them. Will not live like them. Number one blessing. Bless me, Lord. Number one request. Bless me, Lord. Number two. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Give me some space here. Give me some room here. Give me some liberty here to walk to the to walk to the east and walk to the west and get to the north and get to the south. Give me some enlargement here. I've been so confined. And I've been so I've been managing my life, and the bed is not even as long as my height. And the thing covering me is not even sufficient to be able to cover me and keep me from the cold. And my clothes are just the clothes that my senior brother used and they put it on me now and I'm taller than himself and the trusses will not even reach where it ought to reach. And then the shirt will be so, will be so tight and everybody will say, Papa dash me, brother dash me, oh Lord I'm praying to you, enlarge my coast. You see how I am? And even the textbook I use is the textbooks that my senior brother used, my senior sister used, I marked everything, and everything is rough, and I never have a new book to use. Even the exercise books is the one that they used before, and the little thing remaining is what I'm using. Oh Lord, enlarge my coast. You see this Jabez, he knew, he knew his situation. And he needed an enlargement of his coast. That's what the Lord is telling you to also ask for. As you look at your confinement, as you look at the situation of your life, that now the Lord himself will enlarge your coast. I said the Lord will enlarge your coast. That you'll be able to give testimony. If Jesus starts, when you come again another time, you will say, I prayed like Jabez, my coast is enlarged. My territory is enlarged. God will put testimony in your mouth in Jesus' name. In Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 18, chapter 19, verse 8. If the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast as he has sworn unto thy fathers and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers. That's the meaning of enlarging your coast. When he fulfills all his promises, all the supply you need in your life, all the land he promised that he will give you. When he gives you everything, then your coast is enlarged. 
That's why Jesus came. The Jesus came. And that's why he said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, that they might have life, number one, and then number two, that they might have it abundantly. That's enlargement of your coast. To give you all that God has promised, and to give you the abundant life. Number three, God's hand to be with you. God's hand to be with you. That's the power of the Lord. When it says the hand, you understand, you understand. Because our hand is a symbol of power. The things we're able to carry. The things we're able to hold. When a boy holds somebody else, I say, ah, you are so strong. See the way you are holding me. Please leave me alone. Your hand is too strong. That hand is a symbol of power. When Jabez said that your hand will be with me, he means that your power will be with me. Your strength will be with me. Your might will be with me. And your tender hand of love will be with me. That's what he was asking in Ezra chapter 7. Ezra Chapter 7, I'm reading there in verse 6. Ezra 7, verse 6. This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests according according to the hand of the lord is god upon him the favor of the lord was with him the hand of the lord the power of the lord was with him the hand of the lord and the goodness of the lord was with him the hand of the lord and jabez said what i'm looking for what i'm looking for i want your hand to be with me number four and keep me from evil and keep me from evil Actually, when Jesus Christ was praying for us in John chapter 17, that's exactly what he was praying for. John chapter 17, read it there in verse 15. John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Keep them from the evil. And so Jabez was praying, keep me from evil. And then number five, he prayed that it may not grieve me. You know, enough is enough. I've had enough grief, enough sorrow, enough suffering. Now I don't want any grief anymore. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 and verse 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and he has carried our sorrows. And then says, and we did, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, we are healed. That is, if you want all the grief in your life, all the sorrow in your life, all the suffering in your life, you want everything to vanish away, he's telling you here, very plain, very clear, Jesus Christ has borne our grief, has borne our sorrow. And as you come to the Lord Jesus Christ today, and you are praying the same kind of prayer of Jabez, that God will bless you indeed, that God will enlarge your coast, that the hand of God will be upon you, that God will keep you from evil and from the devil, and that there will be no grief anymore. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, He takes all the grief, He takes all the sorrow, He takes all the suffering, He takes all the pain, He takes all the sicknesses, He takes all the despair, all the rejection in your life, He takes everything away and I'm sure you are going to pray like Jabez today and the blessings of God will be upon your life in Jesus name now I come to point number three point number three remind me now what's this my point number three what is it again now tell me out loud 
You know, that's why I like preaching to you, because, you know, you always keep everything in mind and on paper, and even if I forget anything, you are likely to tell me again. Now, we're looking at point number three, and it is receiving answers to prayer. Receiving answers to prayer. It says in the latter part of First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10, the latter part, and God granted him. And God granted him. And God granted him. That which he requested. What you are asking for today, the Lord will grant you in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will grant you in Jesus' name. How is it that God granted him everything he requested? Can you show me the secret? Can you tell me what to do? So that if I take that step, if I follow that pathway, if I go along that secret you are showing me, then the Lord will grant me everything, all things I'm requesting from him. Oh yes, I can show you. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Can you tell me the secret? How God will answer all my prayers. Yes, I can show you. Have faith in God. Because I say unto you, if you will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but will believe that those things which you have said, that it will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. And when you stand praying, believe that you have received what you are asking from the Lord. But when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your Father who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses also. Because if you forgive not, those who trespass against you neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses also. Can you tell me what I will do that God will answer my prayer? Because the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But the Lord has answered my prayer. That means then I didn't regard iniquity in my heart. Confess your faults one to the other. And pray one for another that he may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Abide in me. And let my words abide in you. And then you will ask, whatsoever ye will, and it shall be done unto you. What the Lord is asking from us is very, very simple. That we confess our sins to God. We allow Him to forgive us. And we forgive the people that have offended us. And then we'll be able to have the answers to our prayers. Now, what are the things that the Lord is expecting? I want to summarize for you, for you to catch it very well. That God will answer your prayer and give to you and do for you everything you're asking. Number one, number one, number one, faith in God. 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 You believe. You believe. You believe the Lord with all your heart. Faith in God. Number two, forgiveness. 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 Sin separates between you and God. Let him forgive you. And you also forgive the people that have offended you. Forgiveness. When that is there, then he will grant you everything you ask him. Number three, friendliness. Friendliness. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I have commanded you, and whatsoever you will ask the Father in my name, he will do it for you because you know that I'm sent from the Father, and you love me and you are keeping my commandments. Friendliness. You are friendly with Christ. You are friendly with your fellow brothers and sisters. There is no hatred, there is no animosity, and there is no malice. Faith in God, forgiveness, friendliness. Number four is following Christ. Following Christ. Following Christ. Following Christ. Following Christ. When He leaves, I will follow. Following Christ. He is gentle. 
follow Christ in gentleness. Is holy, follow Christ in holiness. Is kind, follow Christ in kindness. Is compassionate, follow Christ in compassion. Is tender, follow Christ in tenderness. Don't do anything that Christ will not do. Just follow Christ. Just follow Christ. Just follow Christ. Following Christ. Number five, forgetting the past. Behold, I do a new thing. And shall ye not know it? All the things that are past, you'll forget them. That's how you're, you're expecting something new from the Lord. Forget the past. Forget the past. I prayed for I wasn't answered. Forget it. I've been sick for a long time. I suffered in the past. Forget it. I failed many times. Forget it. We have not been able to make ends meet in our family. Forget it. Forgetting the past. Number six, fellowship with God and fellowship with the people of God. Fellowship with God and fellowship with the people of God. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, especially as you see the days approaching. When you come together with the people of God and you're in fellowship with the people of God, that means we're in fellowship with God. And then we can agree together. And if any two of you shall agree together, as such anything you ask on earth, it will be done for you of our Father who is in heaven. Number seven, faithfulness to God. And there is no secret sin. There is nothing you are hiding there that is evil. You are faithful to God. And when you come like that, with faith in God, and forgiveness, and friendliness, and following Christ, and forgetting the past, and fellowshipping with God and God's people, and you are faithful to God and the teaching of the watch of God, you can come and bring your request, and bring your prayer in the sight of the Lord. And God says, He will answer. I want to assure you, if you come and you follow, all this is the Lord has uh, itemized before us, when you come and you pray, Today, God will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Jabez prayed. Jabez prayed. Jabez prayed. How many people are ready to pray like Jabez? How many people are ready to pray like Jabez? How many people are ready to pray like Jabez? Why don't you rise up then and forget every other thing around you and remember your situation? Remember there is no father to take care. Remember the mother is helpless. Remember the rejection. Do you remember you remember the despair? You remember your need? You remember your sickness? You remember agony in your life, you remember the defeat and you remember all the things that have happened to you. And like Jabez was saying, today prayer will change everything. 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 And you are calling upon the Lord. You are calling upon the Lord. You are calling upon the Lord. Have mercy on me and help me. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord today. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord today. Open your your mouth and pray unto the Lord today.